Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming today. I'm Nan Aaron, President of Alliance for Justice. We are here today united with our friends and allies from civil rights, women's rights, LGBTQ groups, workers' rights groups, um, in opposition to the nomination of Jeff Mateer. Jeff Mateer's nomination to a lifetime seat on the federal bench must be immediately withdrawn. What do we look for in a federal judge? We look for an individual who's smart, humble, honest, fair-minded, and an individual with an open mind. Anyone coming before a federal judge needs to have the reassurance that that judge regardless of whether the person is rich or poor, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, has to know that that judge will have an open mind. Jeff Mateer has compared provisions of the Affordable Care Act to policies in Nazi Germany, a statement so irresponsible so disrespectful to the memory of those who were murdered by the Nazi regime that it's almost unimaginable. Jeff Mateer has called transgender children part of, quote, Satan's children, children who deserve our love and care. We have parents of transgender children here today who can tell us how they feel about having Jeff Mateer on the federal bench. <coughs> Jeff Mateer has called the right to marriage equality a right confirmed by the Supreme Court disgusting and supports transgender therapy, a terrible abuse inflicted on LGBTQ youth. This individual does not deserve to be a judge. Neither do many of the other judicial nominees Donald Trump is giving us, people who we know passed the litmus test ensuring they would be anti-choice, against sensible gun policy measures, anti-worker, anti-LGBTQ, anti-women, and anti-environment. And Senate Republicans are marching in lockstep with Donald Trump confirming these people to the federal bench for life. We need to say to Donald Trump and his allies, enough is enough. You cannot force us to accept a person like Jeff Mateer, who is so filled with hostility toward his fellow Americans on the federal bench. Our speakers here today will tell us more about why Mateer's nomination must be withdrawn and must be withdrawn now. I would like to first introduce Elise Hoag. Elise is an expert in organizing and mobilizing grassroots support around social justice issues, including human rights, media reform and representation, and reproductive freedom. She has been president of NARAL Pro-Choice America since February 2013. I've been privileged to work alongside Elise for many years, and I'm proud to say she is one of the smartest, most strategic, most tenacious law, uh, leader in our progressive movement today. Elise, welcome. Thank you, Nan, and thanks for pulling us all together. Um, and hi, y'all. It's gr great to be standing here with all of our friends and all of our allies for one of the most noble causes that we can come together for, and that is preserving the idea that the third branch of government is a backstop, a fail-safe for our core basic fundamental freedoms and rights. I have three things to say about Jeff Mateer. 
One, he shows absolutely that mentality that has become so commonplace from the Trump administration that screams equality for me, but not for thee, right? When it comes to women's reproductive rights, he said he doesn't even believe in the basic precedent of Roe, that he doesn't believe that the constitutional rights are guaranteed. Why is this crucially important? Because one of the things we look to in judges is their ability to evaluate precedent, as well as their commitment, as Nan said, to an open mind and an understanding that there are fundamental freedoms that apply to all people in this country. And for women, Roe is both a substantive right we need access to abortion services, but it is also a symbolic precedent that says we will be thought of as equals in this society. And this does not start and stop with women and reproductive freedom. It extends to anyone in Jeff Mateer's world who doesn't look or act like Jeff Mateer. And that is really antithetical to what we trust our judges and our courts to do, and it's very, very dangerous. The second thing about Jeff Mateer is he shows that they're not even pretending anymore, right? He is fundamentally unqualified for the position for which he has been nominated. Don't trust me, trust the American Bar Association. In fact, Donald Trump has recommended, or recommended, nominated more judges than anyone who have received an not qualified rating. He is simply, he couldn't even get a job um, you know, teaching at a law school with his credentials, and yet we're going to give him a lifetime appointment to the courts. The third thing about Jeff Mateer is he is the tip of an iceberg, right? We must stop him. The line must be drawn in the sand right now. The tide must be turned right now because what he's indicative of is a wholesale attempt in an unholy alliance between Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump to pack the courts and rubber stamp an agenda that undercuts the rights and the freedoms of every single person in this country that does not look and think like them. And we will stop it. The line stops here. A no on Jeff Mateer is a no to the robbing of our courts and with it our children's future for hope, for freedom, for prosperity, and for the fundamental freedoms that make this country great. NARAL will work hard every day mobilizing our members to say enough is enough. We demand our freedom, we demand our equality, we demand that our courts and those who seek to serve on it for a lifetime recognize that this country's greatness is rooted in our commitment to equality and justice and not those who seek to undermine it. So thank you for having me here today. And I am honored to stand with these great people, including all of these great activists behind me. Give them a round of applause. And we're not going to quit fighting until the courts do their job. Thank you, Elise, for your passion. I am now thrilled to introduce Representative Al Green. Um, he is from Ninth, Dis Ninth District in Texas. Throughout his career, Congressman Green has enjoyed the respect of his colleagues as well as a wide cross-section of community leaders who have praised his legal skills, impeccable character, and ability to work with people from diverse backgrounds. Thank you so much, Congressman Green, for coming out today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give Nana a big expression of appreciation, please. Bigger than that, bigger than that. Huge. Thank you so much. I am here today because I will not accept a Trump nominee who is unfit to have a lifetime appointment to a federal bench. We cannot allow it. We must stand against it. Our voices have to be heard, and the best way to send a message is to start today and shout it out. We will not accept this, will we? No. All right. I want you to know that any nominee who would equate transgender children to some form of Satanism is not fit to hold a federal bench. 
Children are children. They're all created by the same creator. There is no difference in children. Children are who they are, and in this country, we have to allow them to be who they are. I will not accept a nominee who believes that diversity training is nothing less than brainwashing. Diversity training is a means and a methodology by which we can help people to better understand that diversity ought to be appreciated and celebrated. We cannot have a person with a lifetime appointment with the mentality that diversity is somehow adverse to the best interests of society. We will not accept this. I am here to say that I believe that the 5-4 decision of the Supreme Court in the case that made, a, made marriage, same-sex marriage legal, is a legal decision. That's my opinion. This judge does not believe that that 5-4 decision is a legal opinion. He doesn't believe it's the law of the land. We can't put people on the bench who won't honor 5-4 decisions of the Supreme Court. We've got to stand against that because that would mean we would start to erode the notion that precedence has to prevail, that five persons can make a decision. The Supreme Court exists because we respect it. This would be an erosion of the Supreme Court. We must stand against his notion that five, four decisions are not the law of the land. And finally this. This nominee is nothing more than further evidence that we have a president who is unfit to be president. Yes. We have a president who has made hate a part of his agenda, it seems. He tends to incite hate. He has indicated that transgender persons should be removed from the military. He has indicated that law enforcement should not be nice to people who are within their care, custody, and control, which would be a violation of the Constitution if they don't treat them properly. He has indicated that persons who are espousing white supremacy, who are bigots, persons who call themselves neo-Nazis, he has indicated that there, there are nice people among them. My friends, we cannot stop with this judge. We cannot stop until we impeach Donald J. Trump. He should not be President of the United States of America. So if you are here today and you believe that Donald J. Trump should be impeached, that his agenda should be pushed aside, set aside, he should be stopped, that he should not be allowed to continue to incite persons to do ugly things, that he should not have his hate agenda continue, if you're here to fight that and to stop that, when I say impeach, you say 45. Impeach. 45. Impeach. 45. Impeach. 45. Thank you and God bless America. Thank you, Congressman Green, um, for working for all of us. Our next speaker is Sarah Watson. Sarah is the parent of a young trans boy. Her son, Jay, is in middle school and recently transitioned. Wow, how inspiring to be here with all of you today. Thank you for coming. My name is Sarah, and I'm just a mom. And I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. <laughs> Thank you. I've been asked to tell our story. And I'm proud to tell our story, and I've learned in the past couple of years how powerful storytelling is. And thanks to a lot of people telling their stories before me, I can tell you ours. My twins are 12 years old. Both of them were assigned female at birth. When they were two and a half, my husband was deployed in Iraq. Yep, we're a military, military family. I noticed then that Jay was really having a hard time, really struggling, felt really uncomfortable and just frustrated and just something was off. And I chalked it up to the deployment that our house was a little disrupted. My husband was gone for a long time. But as the years went on, I noticed a very distinct difference between my twins and how they responded to things. And it was really pronounced. So when Jay was five years old, I sought help from a professional. We went to therapy. We went to family therapy and individual therapy. 
We tried everything, but with each year that went by, Jay got more frustrated, more angry, got really sad, and started saying things like, this life is too hard, and I can't live like this anymore. He would say, no one understands me. And those words coming out of my baby's mouth at eight, nine, 10 years old was horrifying. I'm a survivor of a sibling suicide, and I thought that's the track I was going down. Nothing was working. Um, when Jay was about nine or 10, uh, he started experimenting with hair, cutting it short, taking earrings out, putting them in, wearing more gender neutral clothing. And we were fine with that. We thought, you know, we have a tomboy and we were fine with that. So in May of 2016, we are at church. We are Unitarian Universalists. And there was a teenage boy storytelling. He told us his story of him being transgender and how his parents were not supportive, but how he found um, safety in our church and at school. And it struck me as he was talking. And I thought, you know, maybe Jay is transgender. So when we were walking home from church, I talked to the kids about what it meant to be transgender, what I thought it meant at that point. And I asked Jay if he thought he was transgender. He said, nope, I'm a girl. I floated the idea to his therapist who had been seeing him for four years. Therapist said, nope, not transgender, not gay. You're off track. So we kept plugging along. A couple months later, on July 28, 2016, I put the kids to bed and started to watch the Democratic National Convention. Jay came downstairs and uncharacteristically, uncharacteristically got out of bed. I know, my kids don't get out of bed. They, it's weird, but they don't. So he did that night and asked me to rub his back, and I was happy to do it. Shortly after, Sarah McBride came on Whoops. and started her speech. And I made sure Jay was listening. And I told him, look, this woman is making history. She's the first transgender American to speak at a national convention. We've had a black president. And what I thought, we were going to have a female president. And I said, you can be anything you want to be. Look at these people paving the way and making history. And about 15 minutes later, he nestled his head in my shoulder. You know how kids do when they don't want to look at you in the eye. And he said... I want to be known as a boy. I knew that very instant that was the missing puzzle piece to this kid's happiness. There was no question in my mind. I asked him how long he knew this about himself, and he said, for as long as I can remember. I then asked him, why, why didn't you tell us? Why We've been working all these years trying to find your happiness and trying to find some answers. And this is really hard for me to admit in front of all you people that I don't know. But what my kid said to me, he said, and I'm shaking, he said, I thought if I told you, you and dad wouldn't love me anymore. That was hard to hear. It was hard to hear that my kid wasn't the gender I had been raising him to be. But it was devastating to learn that he thought he, that we could not love him because of who he was. We love him very much. We changed his name and pronouns 10 days later so he could start fifth grade as the boy we know him to be. So even with all that love and all the support that we were giving him, he still couldn't tell us because he was afraid. He was afraid of rejection, bullying, and just generally not being accepted by his community. He finally told me because it was just too painful to keep it a secret any longer. He was really at a breaking point. He knew at a very early age that there is hate in this world, that it's not always safe for kids like him. He knows that there are people like Jeff Mateer who try to shame him because he's transgender. He knows that there are people who use their position and power to discriminate against marginalized people. My son suffered for years living a life that was not authentic because he knew that there are people out there willing to strip him of his rights. People who will bully him and deny him equality in our schools, churches, public places, and in the judicial system. No child should experience this type of hate, 
fear or discrimination. My son is not evidence of how Satan's plan is working. And let me be clear, no child is. Jeff Mateer wants to invoke religion into his agenda, but he is missing the important point here, and that is we are all made in God's image, all of us. I am a dedicated mom who loves her children fiercely and unconditionally. My son is now a happy, although cautious boy who knows he is different, but he knows that his parents will fight to ensure that all transgender kids are supported, accepted, and treated with the dignity and respect they deserve. Jeff Mateer should be ashamed of himself for the many hurtful and cruel things he has said about the LGBTQ community. Not only is he trying to hurt our transgender kids, he is threatening to hurt their allies, specifically their siblings and parents, my family and your families. But we will not stand for it. It is obvious to all of us that Jeff Mateer cannot be impartial in any case involving LGBTQ people. He has made this clear through his words and his actions. If he does not withdraw his nomination, we must push back and demand that he does not get confirmed. We owe it to the LGBT community and to all the kids who are struggling to find their voices and words. We will continue to fight until Jeff Mateer and others like him do not have a platform in which to discriminate against and harm our children. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to tell our story and for helping us in this fight. Thank you, thank you Sarah, for, that, for your courage and for being with, with us today. Our next speaker is L Reverend Leslie Malachi, who is director of African American Religious Affairs at People for the American Way. Reverend Malachi spearheads People for the American Way's incredible court work when it comes to ministers and clergies for African American Religious Affairs, African American Ministers in Action, and African American Ministers Leadership Council. Welcome, Reverend Malachi. Hello, everyone. I am glad to, to see each of you standing here. And I just want to say, even as a Baptist preacher, just a few things. Um, the first is that hate does not belong in Texas, and it definitely doesn't belong anywhere in this country or in this world, for that matter. Um, the second thing I want to say is that I am un unapologetically a Christian, I am pro-faith, and I am a progressive. And the third is that believe is my favorite word. So I want to say that I believe that my faith has always taught me to be an advocate for what is right, and that is for the marginalized, to care for those that are the least of these. I believe as one who is part of a national alliance that we need to treat everyone with respect and with dignity. I believe these values so much so that I was very disturbed when I learned that there was a nominee for federal judge in Texas who has a history of demonizing, of demonizing members who are part of our community, part of our families, part of our homes, and yes, part of our places of worship that are lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. I was disturbed to note that Jeff Matter, who, is the, who was nominated by the person who has the highest elected office residing at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, has made dangerous and unacceptable remarks about individuals, again, who are part of our families, our friends, our neighbors, and I had a problem with that. I'm disturbed to learn that in 2015 that he chose to speak at a Kill the Gays conference that was organized by right-wing figures who called for the death penalty for gay people. I'm disturbed, y'all, about all of this. That same year, he made a speech where he stated that children in the first grade were part of an evil plan, part of Satan's plan. I'm disturbed about that. Matter has openly admitted that he discriminates against gay. 
that people, that he discriminates gay and that that was his church's teaching. He says he attended a conservative Baptist church. We discriminate there, he said. We discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation. Well, let me just say this. No, I don't live in Texas, but I have, a, I have family and friends who do. No, I don't claim to speak for all Christians, but I can say that the God I serve does not teach me to discriminate does not teach me to hate, does not teach me to tear down, but to lift up, to do ministry that helps and doesn't harm, to love and to not hate. I thank God that I was not in those pews when those lessons were taught to him. I thank God that most of us were taught that we shouldn't label any child as a plan of Satan, as a part of a plan of Satan, that we are to embrace all God's children. I thank God that most of us were not taught that gay people should be killed, but that all should have an abundant life and all should be loved as thy neighbor. Matter has been nominated for a lifetime position. I have a problem with that. As a federal judge, I'm not sure that I can believe that he will be able to put aside all of his hateful, homophobic, et cetera, et cetera, personal views and come and go to do his actual job. I'm not sure that he can be one of the nation's judges and be able to fairly evaluate cases that come before him and be unbiased about this. That's what's in the job description that I don't believe he read. I'm not sure that this nominee, for example, can be fair when a, to a family of a transgender child who comes to this court believing that they are going to receive fairness and they will be treated as other people would treat by a man who says that their child is a part of Satan's plan. I'm not sure that lesbians and gay Texans seeking justice would receive an impartial hearing in his courtroom if they, who has, and a person who has openly participated, and again, to say that they should be killed and not love unconditionally. The U.S. Senate has an important part here. They have the influence to make a difference here, and it's time, especially those that come from his home state, to do their job. Senator John Cornyn says that he did not know about the nominee's hateful comments when he supported the nomination. Well, guess what? What was in the dark is now in the light. I am unap unapologetically Christian, and I believe that no matter what our personal beliefs or political background is, that we should all be able to agree and th that one, that Senator Connor must do what is necessary to withdraw his support from this nominee, and two, that hate has no place in the federal courts in Texas or anywhere else. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Malachi. I'm now pleased to introduce Julie Gonan, who is policy director at the National Center for Lesbian Rights, responsible for overseeing and advancing NCLR's federal policy initiatives and managing the day-to-day -day operations of the Washington office. NCLR has been at the forefront of the resistance, litigating cases such as the transgender ban in federal courts. Welcome, Julie. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Julie, and I work at the National Center for Lesbian Rights. We have been fighting for LGBT equality for 40 years, and under this administration, that work is more important than ever before. Do you remember during the campaign last year when Donald Trump waved around an upside-down rainbow flag, and folks were saying, oh, look, he's, he's pro-gay. You have nothing to worry about. Really? And they said, oh, but also, you know, Jared and Ivanka, they'll, they'll keep him in line. So you're fine. Really? So what have we seen from this administration? Well, they took away protections for transgender children in schools almost immediately. Donald Trump's Department of Justice is running around filing briefs in federal court cases all over the country saying that the law does not protect us. They've been erasing LGBT content from federal agency websites and removing questions about us from federal surveys. And then there were the tweets. The tweets from Donald Trump in July, where he announced 
that transgender people would no longer be allowed to serve in the US military. So what did we do when we saw those tweets? We sued his ass. That's right. NCLR immediately took the Trump administration to court, and two weeks ago, we got an injunction. So this senseless and discriminatory policy can't go into effect. We knew it before, but it has become all the more important now with this dangerous and reckless president. Courts matter. Judges matter. We need federal judges who are fair and unbiased and free of extreme and hateful views. And that ain't Jeff Mateer. You've already heard some of this today, but it bears repeating. Jeff Mateer said marriage equality will lead to people marrying their pets. Jeff Mateer gave several speeches at that conference organized by a pastor who says that LGBT people, LGBT people are worthy of death. Jeff Mateer thinks it's fine to subject children to bogus and harmful conversion therapy to try to change their sexual orientation or their gender identity. He has actively crusaded against legal protections for LGBT people, and of course, he said that transgender children are part of Satan's plan. He said that about children. Here's what a real judge had to say about transgender people. This is from the judge who put a stop two weeks ago to Donald Trump's transgender military ban. Transgender individuals have suffered and continue to suffer severe persecution and discrimination. Despite this discrimination, this court is aware of no argument or evidence suggesting that being transgender in any way limits one's ability to contribute to society. The exemplary military service of plaintiffs in this case certainly suggests that it does not. Those are the words of a jurist who recognizes the dignity and the humanity of the people who come before her. And then there's Jeff Mateer. We have one foul-mouthed juvenile occupying the White House, and he apparently wants to put another one on the federal bench. Well, that's unacceptable. We demand that Jeff Mateer's nomination to the federal bench be withdrawn. If it's not, the Senate better do its job and vote no on his confirmation. Our rights are too important to be entrusted to those who demonize our community. We need federal judges who will uphold our constitutional rights and support freedom and equality for all. Tell your senators no on Jeff Mateer. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. And now, on behalf of all of us here today, we are thrilled to welcome Senator Jeff Merkley from Oregon, longtime champion of LGBTQ rights including being the author of the Equality Bill, which would prohibit discrimination yeah. on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. Senator Merkley has been an outstanding, courageous fighter for justice, and thank you so much, Senator, for joining us today. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Are you ready to fight for justice? Yeah. Are you ready to fight for freedom? Yeah. Are you ready to make sure the Senate does not confirm this judge? Yes. Yeah. Well, I sure am glad to hear that because the concepts of justice and freedom require a system that treats everyone equally. I think it was uh, Ted Kennedy who said the promise of America will never be fulfilled as long as justice is denied to anyone among us. And certainly, this nominee wants to deny fair treatment to many among us. He admits and says he's proud of the fact that he engages in discrimination against the LGBT community. Can you engage in discrimination and serve in the role of justice for every American? No! He says that he doesn't respect the Supreme Court decision that marrying is constitutional for same-sex couples. Is it feasible to be a judge and fairly treat everyone if you simply throw out the non-discrimination decision of the Supreme Court? No. He says that trans children, uh, transgender children are part of Satan's plan, which has to be one of the, the cruelest, most malinformed comments 
ever heard by a nominee to a judgeship. Can anyone, a parent or of a transgender child or a transgender child or a transgender adult expect to have justice if he was the judge? No. So this is very, very uh, disturbing that it's come to this point that we would have an administration that doesn't have a vision of justice. In fact, a, such a mal-shaped de determination to tear down justice that this person would ever be nominated. That is deeply, deeply disturbing. Lyndon Baines Johnson said that freedom is the right to be treated in every part of our national life as a person equal in dignity and promise to all others. I like that description of freedom, the freedom to be treated in every aspect of our national life as equal in dignity and promise to all others. Does this individual being proposed to serve as a district judge believe in that concept of freedom? No. So this is why we must defeat him. We must defeat him because he doesn't stand for justice, he doesn't stand for freedom, he doesn't support our Constitution, and so let's all get together and make sure it doesn't happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Merkley, for your wonderful leadership. And next, we've got Cedric Lawson. Um, who is field manager at the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. He helps lead the organization's work on the courts nationally and with partners in the field. LCCHR is a leader in the fight against Trump's nominees to the federal bench. Welcome, Cedric. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cedric Lawson. I come here on behalf of the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, a coalition of more than 200 national civil and human rights organizations. We, work, we know that in coalition, there's strength, and often we cannot win against a common opposition unless we work together. I'm so excited to be here with you all today as we fight to stop such a terrible nominee from receiving a lifetime federal judgeship. Every day, courts, make decisions that impact many aspects of our lives, of all who live in the United States, and safeguard our most, most fundamental rights and freedoms from attack. These victories are now at risk because of the nominees President Trump is putting forward for confirmation to the federal courts. You've heard quite a bit about Jeffrey Mateer in terms of his anti-trans bias, his rampant homophobia, and his assault on access to reproductive health care to boot. I will quickly mention Don Willett, a justice on the Texas State Supreme Court, yeah, boo, who also has ridiculed the LGBT community. The day after the Supreme Court oral argument in Obergefell v. Hodges, Justice Willett wrote in a tweet, quote, I could support recognizing a constitutional right to marry Bacon. We cannot allow the Senate to rubber stamp Trump's anti-LGBT judicial nominees. We must say no to discriminatory tweeters and bloggers from the White House to the courthouse. This nominations process is not all on Trump. Let's keep that in mind. The Senate's duty is to advise and consent on all nominees. But it is also our duty as the American people to hold senators accountable for their actions and their votes. We cannot forget that. We must let senators know where we stand on each of the nominees that come forward especially those who are discriminating against marginalized communities. Now is the time to contact our senators through email, through phone calls, through visiting offices, not just here on Capitol Hill, but also in our communities across the country. Now more and more, the media is taking notice of how unfit Trump's nominees are. We've heard about Tally as well. We've heard about Katzis, who could be nominated and be, or who is nominated and could be confirmed to the second highest court in the United States, the DC Circuit Court of Appeals. Now is our time to show that Trump doesn't control this process and that the Senate is accountable to us, the people. We must stop Mateer and all nominees who show that they do not have the temperament to be fair to all Americans and to administer equal justice under the law. 
Let's keep working to build an America as good as its ideals. Thank you. Thank you, Cedric, and to the Leadership Conference. Our next speaker is Clark Williams, who is with Communications at Urge, Unite for Reproductive and Gender Equity. Urge builds and empowers young leaders in states like Texas to advocate for reproductive justice. Urge has been leaders in the fight against trap laws such as the 20-week abortion ban, they're often decided in the federal courts. Welcome, Clark Williams. Ooh, wow, okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Clark and I work at Urge. So I should just speak in the, this one. Okay. <laughs> uh, my name is Clark and I work at Urge. Um, as someone who works with young people in Texas who are predominantly queer folks of color, I know for a fact that Jeff Mateer is unfit to serve as a judge in Eastern Texas. His record has shown that he would not be fair and his views are openly hostile to reproductive justice and to any laws supporting the LGBTQ community. I hear from our young people in Texas regularly that they already don't feel safe. Governor Abbott is openly hostile towards queer young folks. The Texas legislator is openly hostile towards young people trying to access abortion care. The state's attorney general is openly hostile towards documented young people and their families. In a climate like this, the courts need to be a place of fairness, and Jeff Mateer has proven that he is not capable of doing that. As Assistant Texas Attorney General, Mateer used the courts to try to deny Jane Doe her abortion. Instead, he supported and advocated for fake crisis pregnancy centers, which we know have a long and disturbing history of targeting low-income people and communities of color. Young Texans and anyone looking for honest, medically accurate reproductive health care options should know that they can go to court, access justice, be heard, and never, ever be afraid of living their truth. Thank you. Our next speaker is the inimitable Sharon McGowan. Uh, who is the Director of Strategy at Lambda Legal, the country's largest and oldest legal organization committed to fighting for the civil rights of the LGBTQ community. Relying on both of her litigation expertise and her experience in the Obama administration, Sharon leads Lambda's work in Washington, D.C. Welcome, Sharon. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a little chilly, I know, but this is something to get fired up about. It's really wonderful to be here. And I just wanted to thank all of the organizers because this is, this is so important. The damage that Donald Trump can do in many ways is not necessarily limited to his administration. This is damage that he will be inflicting on us from generations, for generations to come. Our children and grandchildren will be living with these judges if we do not put our foot down and say enough. And so it's important to remember that the rallies happening today in both Washington and in Austin, Texas, are about more than one specific nominee. Yes, Jeff Sessions is indeed unfit for the bench for all of the reasons you have heard today. And we renew the call that Lambda Legal and scores of other LGBT organizations made immediately after his announcement of his nomination that this nomination be withdrawn. But let's be clear, there are many, many other Jeff Mateers in the pipeline. Nominees who would not only write LGBT people out of the Constitution, but who fundamentally challenge our right to exist. These nominees deny the legitimacy of our relationships, take aim at our families, and have declared open season on our children. And are we going to stand for that? No! 
Jeff Mateer may have been brazen enough to have his hateful views caught on video, but make no mistake about it, this is about more than Jeff Mateer. This is about Kyle Duncan, Don Willette, and Matthew Kaczmarek, nominees who, if confirmed, would slam the courthouse door in the face of thousands of LGBT people living in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, people who more than most depend on the courts to protect them against forces who refuse to accept that LGBT people are entitled to equal protection of the law. And will we stand for that? But it goes even beyond those four nominees. We have Stephen Grass, Gregory Katzis, Mark Norris, Damian Schiff, Stephen Schwartz. All of these nominees have demonstrated their outright contempt for LGBT people. Confirming any one of them could cause serious damage to the safety and security of LGBT people in this country for decades. But when all of these nominees are considered together, it is clear that there is an unveiled an unapologetic attempt to turn back the clock on the rights that LGBT people have achieved and to erase us from public life. Lambda Legal has been fighting for our families for over 40 years and courts have been central to the progress of our community. We must not allow our courts to be poisoned in this way. So today on the steps of the Capitol, we say with one clear and unified voice to the Senate that enough is enough. It's time that they stop rubber stamping these nominees without care for the damage that everyone knows they are going to inflict on LGBT people and others. It is time that more senators like Senator Merkley join us in this fight for we all know is right and correct and truly the America that we believe in. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. We're not done yet. Um, Sarah McBride, National Press Secretary of HRC. In 2012, Sarah made national headlines when she came out as transgender while serving as student body president at American University. HRC has been in the forefront of litigation on the transgender military ban. Welcome, Sarah. Well, thank you so much, Nan, for pulling us all together. I want to take a brief moment to thank Sarah and every parent of a transgender youth who is here. Thank you for loving your children. Sarah, it's an honor to be a small part of your family's story. Can we give them a round of applause? Well, good afternoon. My name is Sarah McBride. I am the National Press Secretary at the Human Rights Campaign, the nation's largest LGBTQ civil rights organization. And my friends, I am a proud transgender American. I am here today to say that the nomination of Jeff Mateer is an insult. It is an insult to LGBTQ people. It is an insult to women. It is an insult to all who believe in the dignity and worth of every person. And it is an insult to the fundamental principle enshrined on the front of the Supreme Court of the United States, equal justice under law. Equal justice cannot come from a man who has called transgender youth part of Satan's plan. Equal justice cannot come from someone who has compared marriage equality to bestiality. Equal justice cannot come from someone who participated in a conference hosted by a proponent of the death penalty for LGBTQ people. Too many including all of us standing here today, cannot be ensured equal justice in a courtroom presided over by Jeff Mateer. His extreme agenda leaves millions of Americans behind simply because of who they love, how they identify, and where they pray. His view of our Constitution is one that rejects the right to privacy, rejects equal protection for LGBTQ people, and rejects the, rejects the foundation of true religious freedom, the separation of church and state. Through his words and actions, Jeff Mateer has proven himself incapable of serving wide swaths of the American public. A person who holds such clear contempt for his fellow Americans has no place being granted a lifetime appointment on the federal bench. And if the President of the United States will not withdraw this mistake of a nomination, 
then the U.S. Senate must fulfill its constitutional duties to all Americans and reject this nominee. Let it be known that any senator who votes for Jeff Mateer will own his rhetoric, they will own his policies, and they will have to answer to all of us. We deserve judges who respect the Constitution, who respect everyone, and who can fulfill their basic responsibilities without bigotry or bias. Jeff Mateer fails that test, and he is unfit to serve as a federal judge. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sarah. Now we, we're going to hear from a parent of a trans child, Lori Worley. Lori is the parent of a trans child. Her children are all in high school and college. She's one of the many, many parents that signed on to a letter calling for the withdrawal of Jeff Mateer's nomination. Welcome, Lori. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Lori Worley, and I'm the mother of Sam, a 17-year-old high school senior. Sam is transgender, but being transgender is only one small part of who my wonderful child is. Since my son can't be here today, he's in school, where he belongs. Um, I'll describe him to you. Sam is about five foot eight, which makes him almost three inches taller than me. He loves that. Like his dad, Sam is of slight build and has light brown wavy hair. He's an A student, did well on his SATs, and is finishing up his college applications. He has lots of friends, completed most of his community service hours in our local library, and is a voracious reader. He's active in two after-school activities, Youth in Government, which is a um, YMCA program, Ooh. and his school's newspaper. He's recently become a basketball fan. He knows as much about the players, their stats, and the minutia of teams, games, and coaches as does his dad, and his dad used to be a professional sports writer, so that's no small feat. Sam is witty, curious, and he is sometimes very, very sarcastic the way teens are. He has a wonderful sense of humor. Sam is also kind, and he cares deeply about others and is quick to point out injustice when he sees it. He is deeply, deeply passionate about fairness. He is one of the most honest and brave people I know. Here's one thing Sam is not. Sam is not evidence that Satan's plan is working. <laughs> Sam is a miracle, just as all children are miracles. No child is part of a satanic plan, and I don't want my son to hear anyone say such a cruel thing. But Jeff Mateer thinks otherwise. Mateer, who as you've heard, is up for a lifetime federal judicial appointment, told a 2015 audience that transgender gender children like Sam demonstrate that Satan's plan is working. This is hatred, pure and simple, and it has no place in our community, no place in our country, and no, certainly no place in our courts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lori, for coming out and speaking with us today. Our final speaker is Harper Jean Tobin. Um, she as is the Director of Policy at the National Center for Transgender Equality. Harper Jean coordinates all aspects of advocacy on federal administrative policies and regulations at NCTE and works to provide information for the public 
about laws and policies that affect transgender people. NCTE has been working with parents of trans children to bring attention to the importance of the courts and Mateer's recent Satan's Plan comments. Thank you so much, Harper, for your work on this. Thank you so much, everybody. And I want to say especially thank you to Lori and thank you to, to Sarah, a, a parent who spoke earlier. I, um, I had the, I had the, the honor, which I wish I did not have, of, uh, of uh, actually personally sending a letter from, uh, from Sarah and, and Lori and about 275 other parents from all over the country, parents of transgender children, this letter that they wrote to Mr. Mateer. Um, I just looked up his uh, email address at his current job and sent it to him. And I very nicely, I said, you know, you're Mr. Mateer. I would like you to know this big group of parents, you know, wanted to share these thoughts with you. And I hope you'll take it the time to read it and consider its content. I didn't get a response. Um, when uh, some of the, the parents got together and did a, a video, which some of you have, been out, have, have, have seen, uh, reading very, you know, they're very heartfelt words from that letter about being parents uh, and about worrying about their children and what it, what, it, uh, what it says to kids to hear public officials talk about them like this. Um, I sent Mr. Matera another email that said, I hope you'll take a look at this video and consider uh, what these parents have to say. I, I haven't heard back from them yet. Um, and I haven't heard back from the, from the members of the Senate Judiciary Committee either about this. What do they think about talking about our kids like this? Uh, we've, we've, uh, we've all, I think, heard from, from the parents, and we should really, really sit with that. You know, these, we're not just talking about a few stray comments. Um, uh, we're not just talking about calling kids Satan's plan. Think about what that does to kids. Um, we're not just talking about saying, you know, bragging, we discriminate all right. Another, another of Mr. Matera's greatest hits. We're talking uh, about a man along with several other of these judicial nominees who are being quickly pushed through the Senate, who have made a big part of their career on, uh, on vilifying and trying to, to publicly shame, demonize, and humiliate a group of people because of who they are. And that is not just unbecoming of a nominee for a lifetime judgeship, that's really unbecoming of an American. Let alone of any kind of public official we're going to give the grave responsibility of being a federal judge. And so I'm calling on the members of the Senate Judiciary Committee and the members of the Senate as a whole to do their job and reject this nominee, he is not just controversial, he is unfit. And we deserve better. We all deserve nominees who are qualified to do this very important, potentially lifetime job, and who we know will actually be fair. And it is not often in the history of this country that we see nominees, let alone a bunch of them, who are so manifestly unfit as Mr. Matier. This should not be a difficult call. I don't think that there is, there certainly shouldn't be a member of this body who wants to own comments like these, who wants to own a record like these. This is the definition of a lack of judicial temperament. This should not be a hard call, senators. So, I look forward to hearing, especially from Senators Cornyn and Cruz, who filled out those blue slips, and from the other me members of the committee. Do they really intend to move forward with this? 
I certainly hope not. I certainly hope that they will find the, that they will find the character and the conviction and the judgment not to join in, not to take ownership of telling hundreds of thousands of children that they're part of Satan's plan. Not of saying that, you know, we discriminate all right. Not to take ownership of that shameful record. The U.S. Senate and the people of this country deserve much, much better than that. That is not who we are, is it? No, no that is not who we are. And I will say that as a, as a community of transgender people and our loved ones, our family members all over the country, incidentally, my mom and dad want you to know that I am not a part of Satan's plan. Um, and they didn't tell anybody that even when I was a rambunctious five-year-old. And they certainly don't want a federal judge who thinks that about their kid. None of us want that. A lot of the members of the Senate and the Judiciary Committee are parents. I don't think they want that for their kids, for their grandkids. We have come a long way, not just as a transgender community, but as a country. And we should not turn back and accept this kind of hate now. We should not. We must not. We cannot. We are better than that. So I am calling on all of you to call on the Senate. Tell them, this is not okay. This is beyond politics. This is fundamental. This is not okay. This nomination will not do. It has to be turned back. If Mr. Mateer will not listen to these parents, if Mr. Mateer will not withdraw himself, the Senate must reject him. And it's as simple as that. It's got to be. We're better than this. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out today. Thanks to our parents, our courageous parents, our activists, our advocates, our members of Congress, our clergy. We really appreciate all of you coming today. In a few days, the Federal Society will be meeting in Washington, D.C., and they'll be picking their next crop of judges. I think as Harper Jean Tobin said, we deserve a lot better. Let's start with Jeff Mateer. Let's make sure that his nomination is withdrawn. Thank you all so very much. Bye-bye.